Good morning. Good morning. As you can see, I'm doing something a little bit different this morning. Uh, I got a new mic and I set it up on my computer and I'm uh, doing things a little bit differently. So I put the Jesus picture up, up behind me. That was one that uh, my wife's family had when we, we got married and we we ended up getting it. It's uh, Jesus at the United Nations and um, I really I really like that old picture. Alright, welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Um, it is Holy Saturday. Oh, man. So this morning, I'm going to be reading from uh, Lamentations, and then the Psalms, and then First Peter, and then it says in the Gospel readings this morning, it's either Matthew or John, and they're both fairly short, so I'm just going to read both of them. So, <clears throat> so, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you're all doing well this morning. Uh, happy Saturday. The Old Testament lesson this morning. Lamentations 3, 1 through 9, and then 19 through 24. So here we go. I am one who has seen affliction under the rod of, the, of God's wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. Against me alone he turns his hand, again and again, all day long. He has made my flesh and my skin waste away and broken my bones. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. He has made me sit in darkness like the dead of long ago. He has walked, walked me about so that I cannot escape. He has put heavy chains on me. Though I call and cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stones. <clears throat> he has made my paths crooked. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Amen. Always hope in the Lord. And it's my hope that uh, with this new setup and everything, I've got a boom mic just out of camera thing. And I keep looking at my monitor over there. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> is my hope that the sound quality is a little bit better, uh, something I was always just striving for uh, when I was, uh, well, the other place I was reading is right over there. So anyway, uh, Psalm lesson this morning, Psalm 31, verses 1 through 4, and then 15 through 16. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your namesake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me. You are my refuge. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Amen. A little coffee here. All right. Uh, the New Testament uh, epistle lesson this morning is First Peter, chapter four, verses one through eight. So here we go. Since therefore Christ suffered in, in in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same intention, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished is has finished with sin, so as to live for the rest of your earthly life, no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. You have already spent enough time in doing what the Gentiles like to do, living in licentiousness, passions, drunkenness, revels, carousing, and lawless idolatry. They are surprised that you no longer join them in the same excesses of dissipation, as so they blaspheme. But they will have to give an accounting to him who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was proclaimed even to the dead, so that, 
though they had been been judged in the flesh as everyone is judged, they might live in the spirit as God does. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love co covers a multitude of sins. All right, the gospel reading this morning. The first gospel reading is Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 through 66. And when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took, Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone over the door of the tomb and went away. <clears throat> Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the preparation, the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers, go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The next gospel reading comes to us, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 38 through 42. Let me grab a little coffee for <clears throat> and it's just the same accounting in John's Gospel. So, After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, the tomb and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. And this is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, your name is glorified even in the anguish of your son's death. Grant us the courage to receive your anointed servant who embodies a wisdom and love that is foolishness to the world. Empower us in witness so that all in the world may recognize in the scandal of the cross the mystery of reconciliation. Merciful God, Release from us the time of trial and oppression, that we may witness to the, to the eternal hope of grief becoming joy and life rising from death. death. Amen. And again, eternal God, rock and refuge, with roots grown old in the earth, riverbeds run dry, and flowers withered in the field, we wait for revival and release. Abide with us until we come alive in the sunrise of your glory. Amen. All right. Well, I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow morning on Coffee in the Word. God bless.